Hey, and welcome back to part two of our video series about the Godot animation player. Uh, this time what we're gonna do is build on what we did in the first uh, video where we made this walk down animation and we added a hat and the hat kind of bobs around with the player. Uh, what we're gonna do this time is allow the character to move to a different direction. And then also we're gonna add more of a non-cyclical animation, like one where the character just puts on the hat or takes the hat off. So let's expand a little bit on what we did last time. Uh, here we have our walking down animation. He's marching in place, it's great. Uh, what I'm gonna do is add another track to our hat, actually. It's something I kind of forgot to do last time, but um, we're gonna address it now anyway. So uh, on our hat, I'm gonna make another track. We'll select hat and then which property we wanna animate. This time we're also going to do frame like we did for the character sprite. And that's because our hat sprite sheet has four different frames to it. And so when we're going to turn the character you know, to the right, instead of looking down, uh, we need to rotate the hat as well. And so uh, just to do a little bit of pre-work, and you'll see why in a little bit, um, I'm going to add a new frame here. And this time, I'm going to make sure that it defaults to 0. Uh, the reason that's important is because uh, to make a new right side animation, you could uh, make a new animation and like recreate everything we've already done, but that can be kind of tedious. And so what I prefer to do is just duplicate what I've done. And so when I'm going to duplicate, I try to get as much done ahead of time so that I don't have to redo work in multiple animations after I run the duplication. So uh, to do that, I'm going to say animation and duplicate. And now you see that this drop down where we select which animation we're looking at, we have two of them. Walk down, which is the first one we made, and then walk down copy. So I'll select copy, and then if I hit animation again, you can rename it. Uh, we'll call it something like walk right. Now I'll just grab these duplicated frames and modify them to what we need. So when we were working on the down animation, we needed frames 0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, but our right strip, part of the strip, will uh, we'll start on frame number 4 and go up from there. So I'll change this one to 4. Next one, 5. I think there's a faster way to do this. If you know how, please post in the comments about it because this is just how I do it and I don't think it's the best way, but it gets the job done. Uh, so I've manually updated each one and now you see that the frames, if I start dragging this around, uh, they have been updated to our right facing animation. One kind of cool thing is that the animations themselves have the same pattern where the head bobs and so the hat we've already duplicated from before the position track so we don't have to redo that, it's already working. However, uh, the hat see this little like bell front thing on the hat is facing forward still. So when this animation starts, we want to grab this first uh, frame placement of the hat and make sure that that's on one because the right facing hat in our hat sprite sheet is on frame one. Now I'll play the animation and see that everything is set up correctly. Just like before, it was very minimal work to get to our right facing character. Now that we have two separate animations, we can actually put them into our game and show how we can switch between them using code. So we don't have any code for our character yet in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and select Kinematic Body 2D. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to rename him character. I should have done that before. Whoops. Uh, so now that he's named character, I'll create a new script by pressing this button, a new script button. And now it'll suggest character. It's just a little bit of a nicer name than Kinematic Body 2D. Um, and we have our new blank file. I'm going to get rid of almost everything. And now to grab our animation player and actually fire animations off with code, uh, you just select the node. And a good way to do that, you can say dollar sign and then the name of your node. So dollar sign animation player um, dot play, pretty simple API. And then in here, you pass in the name of your string and see it even is smart enough to kind of autocomplete. The Godot knows the animations we have defined in our animation player, and so it's suggesting them to us. So when this node uh, fires its ready event, when it you know enters the scene for the first time, like we've talked about before, uh, we just want to play this walk down animation. Let's go ahead and actually use this in our game now, because we actually haven't fired it up in the game yet. So what we'll do is go over to our world map scene that we set up in a previous video. Uh, but if you haven't done that, it's OK. It's just a, basically a graphic um, with some stuff in it, but it, that doesn't matter. So we'll right click on a Y sort that we have ready to go here, add um, instance child scene, and we'll pull up our character scene that we created and just drag him somewhere in here. And then when we fire up the game with command B or uh, F5 on Windows, you see that the game fires and our hero, because the ready uh, function calls it, is already playing our down animation. Hopping back over to our script now, uh, let's actually make him more interactive. So we'll go ahead and add in our physics process 
uh, thank you, Godot, for auto completing. And then we'll say if input dot is action just press. All I'm going to do is add like if you press the right key, it's going to change to the right animation. If you press the down key, it'll change to the down one. Pretty basic stuff. And then we'll go on from there. Uh, so if you press, let's do down first. So press the down key. Um, we'll do what we did before, which is animation play walk down, and then kind of copy this logic. Uh, we'll throw in an like else if here. Uh, so if this one's not true, it'll check this one. Uh, UI right, and then the opposite case will um, walk right. So now when I boot up the game, uh, when I press the down key, it'll switch to the down one. When I press right, the character will start facing right. And I can just keep toggling back and forth, and you see that everything on the screen reflects the same stuff we saw in our animation player preview. Now let's cover the case where maybe you want to do something that's not cycling all the time, like the walking animation where he's always walking. Uh, let's add an animation where the character takes off the hat or puts it back on. And this will like show us some kind of new concepts that you can do with the animation player. So I will navigate back to our character and select our animation player, make sure everything is selected here. And this time I'm going to duplicate it again, uh, making sure I'm on the down animation. So I'll say animation duplicate. And just like before, we'll rename this one, the new one, to be um, let's see, we want to call this toggle hat. Our character sprite sheet had two extra little frames at the bottom for this kind of thing. Uh, and so what we can do is reuse this first one, but uh, I looked it up already and I know that the frame I want here is number 16. And then uh, this one after this will change to 17. And then right after we do 17, we'll go back to 16. So it's kind of like, it's like the character kind of bowing down a little bit and then coming back up. Uh, and then I'm gonna remove our cyclical button here. What is that called? Animation looping button. Uh, and so now when you see the, the, the character um, uh, does the kneeling kind of thing, but the hat isn't updated because the, cat, the hat still wants to go back up to position zero, zero on the third frame. So we'll come into our third spot in our hat. And instead of going back to zero, we're actually gonna go one more spot down to one or two, sorry. Uh, and so now we'll have zero, one, two, back to one. And now it matches up with the character appropriately. So the purpose of this animation, as the name suggests, is to toggle the hat of the character. So if the character is wearing the hat, they'll take it off. If the character is not wearing the hat, they'll put it on. Um, and so that kind of requires some logic. But luckily, with the Godot animation player, we can fire code. And that code can be scheduled to fire right at a certain time on any of these spots on the timeline. Uh, and so what we'll do first is create the code we need to fire. So I'll go over to our script. We're going to add a new function. This function is going to be called uh, toggle hat visible. And we're just going to have some really basic logic that's just like we're going to grab the hat like we did before. So hat and then its visibility or dot, dot visible is going to be equal to the opposite of its current visibility. Now we can use Godot's animation player to fire this method whenever we want. Uh, preferably somewhere appropriate in the animation cycle. Down here, our animation player is still open, so I can add a new track. This time I'm gonna choose call method track, which allows us to choose a function or a method of code to run. Uh, this code lives in our character script, so I'll have character highlighted and say okay, and now that gives us a new function track. And when I uh, create a stop here, I get this new pop-up, and the pop-up you can see already knows the code, like the methods available in our, our character. And so the one that we created, toggle hat visible, is right here, ready to go. You could also like redo ready if you wanted. I don't know why you do that, but you could. Uh, so we'll choose toggle hat visible, say open, and then right at this spot, uh, when this happens in the game, our uh, visible or toggle hat visible method will fire right when the animation hits this spot. Making it visible, let's go back to our 2D editor so we can see. I think where we want it is like right here. Um, this isn't going to be a perfect animation, but you get the idea. And to actually fire it in context of the game, we need to add it to our character script as well. So I'll go back to character. Um, we'll add one more of these um, cases. And we'll say UI accept, which is like our space or enter button. We're going to say um, toggle hat. We'll space this out. Now when I run the game, our right and down still work, but I press the space bar. 
and the character takes the hat off. And then if I press it again, he'll run the same animation, but this time put the hat on during that same frame. The other kind of cool thing is that now our hat, the invisible, is kind of like a little piece of state. Uh, so I can walk to the right with the hat on, walk down with it on, take the hat off, and then right, um, be walking without it, and then down again, and he's not wearing the hat. So like we talked about before, if you have a game where you can like unlock pieces of clothing for the character, maybe like uh, pieces of armor in Mega Man X or something like that, uh, you can just toggle those pieces on and off or swap them out with whatever you need without needing to redo the animations every time. Okay, that wraps up the end of our little video series about the Godot animation player. Uh, we've covered a lot of good stuff as far as creating animations, uh, automating and animating different types of tracks, uh, and then firing those animations with code. There's a lot more you can do there too. There are some other different, more like functional, less manual ways to choose which animation should be playing right now. And we'll definitely maybe cover those in future videos. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're interested in that kind of thing. But I personally, I've just loved using the animation player. The game I'm working on right now, uh, each character in the game has like a ton of animations. And so it's really important that I stay organized and that those animations are easy to come back to later to edit and modify things. Otherwise things just get absolutely out of control. So the Godot animation player has made that really easy for me and it's really awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you're into this kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to tell us about the game that you're making, hit up our Discord channel, links in the description below, and I'll catch you all next time.